Jarrell, what does Nikon need to do to win 2024? Brandon, this one's tough. Uh, in all actuality, I've already said they've come out with some of the best specs this year in a camera under $2,500 in the Z6 Mark III. 6K, incredible camera. With that being said, they have all they also dropped the prices on the Komodo and the Komodo X. Yeah. Which is insane, right? I would actually put them in second place for winning 2024. Only because Canon's come out so strong. I don't know what Nikon can do. Because they also did the red LUTs. Yeah. Which was fire. And this is just my own personal list. You know, my personal opinion. I, the only thing that I imagine, I don't think they need to do anything like new cameras, new new LUTs. I don't think they need to do anything like that. And this is going to be honest. I think that they need to back up that money truck <laughs> to <laughs> every influencer that is willing and get more and obviously not for like shilling purposes of try the Nikon because the Nikon's cool. It's cool now. No, it's not that. It's people need to see more red footage, not more, more Nikon footage. They need to see the image. They need to uh, there is a absence yeah. of Nikon footage on YouTube. Everyone, you can go everyone. out and you can see Canon. You can go out and you can see the Komodo. You can go out and see Sony all day. You know what the FX3 looks like. Yeah. You can spot it. But like when people see the freaking Z8 image, they're like, is that, what, what is that? What, where are you shooting that on? Yeah. They don't know. And so until people see more red, more Nikon footage, like I don't know that they're going to win the year. So my suggestion for for Red to or Nikon Nikon Red to win the year is literally put back up the money trucks, get as many people shooting on Nikon as humanly possible, and get it out there in front of people's eyes. See, I feel like they've done a decent job. The uh, prolonged deal, like they yeah. everybody does it for the launch. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I need to see a like with Peter McKinnon. Outside of his like in last video, he was not shooting on a Canon. He was shooting on maybe it was a film camera. But he was shooting on something a little different. I don't know if you saw that in his video. The uh, shot video. His uh, his uh, inner struggle video, the one that just dropped maybe yesterday. Oh, I don't think I, I was that like, yet. aren't you an ambassador? Maybe it was a film camera. Anyways, uh, they need to legitimate just get like you know if you're uh, well, I'm gonna assume this as him being an ambassador. You know when you watch a Peter McKinnon video, yeah, it's Canon all day. Yeah, it's shot on Canon. You mm. know what the Canon looks like. I don't know. That might not be true. I was gonna say, but at least it's the assumption. I've seen a red in his hand a lot. Oh, stop it! Like a lot. Stop it! This I'm is not. A, this is a Canon. This is a Canon channel. No, it is not. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. When it comes to Peter McKinnon, we're gonna have to split them. All right, because the truth is. He has shot, like, his whole documentary that hasn't come out yet, the Arrows and Airways or whatever that band is, I don't know. But he was shooting that entire doc on red. Oh, wow. He's shooting the entire doc on red. Okay. So technically, if we're being real, Peter McKinnon is an icon shooter. So <laughs> here's what I have to say when it comes to how Nikon can win 2024. And chat, make sure... Oh, Tell yeah. us what Nikon needs to do to win. Oh, yeah, they're on Put it. Put Nikon dash. I Anybody already that showed see up. it. Here hey, it people is. that showed up. You ready? No, no, no. If you late, you late. All three of you. Hop in the chat and y'all figure it out. Here's what Nikon needs to do to win 2024. Mm -hmm. You ready? Put R3D mm. raw mm. on all of their cameras. On all of them. <laughs> okay? Like, look. The I'm D700. Be, look. <laughs> the D look when they did the LUT thing, like when they reached out to me and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna put, we're gonna, you know, we're open up the uh, the LUTs," and I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, that's cool." I was like, "So like, is it only for like Nikon Raw?" Or they're like, "No, no, no, it's in log." So it's like anything that shoots in log, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Anything that shoots in log?" And they're like, "Yeah, anything that shoots in log," mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Like anything, <laughs> bro?" We were talking Z9, yeah. Z8, Z63. Z62, uh -huh. ZF, ZFC, um, Z7. Yeah. Like they went 
back. So here's what I'm saying. If you can put R3D RAW in the Nikon cameras of today. Yeah. And then, you ready for this? It's sort of like a, you, you, let, you let us, us being creators on YouTube, show the Sony fan people that all you need is a little adapter, which I've already made a whole video about. You put a little adapter on, an, on this little adapter. You put this little adapter on your Nikon camera that now shoots R3D RAW. And you can throw your Sony lens on that camera body. Bro, I'm telling you right now, people will move. Because the hardest part about moving fan people is they are invested. Financially invested. Almost like a stock, bro. Like they have bought lenses and they and their stock is guaranteed to depreciate. <laughs> <laughs> like you will never sell your camera lens for the same price or more than what you bought it for. Yeah. Right? So you don't want to switch camera bodies because you got all these lenses that you know you're going to lose on. And you might win. You might. I mean, you're still going to lose on the body, but maybe not as much. But a lens is hard, right? So, bro, if you could put R3D RAW in a Nikon and then Sony people could use their lenses on it, and now you're opening up, even if it's still 12-bit RAW, yeah. but it's R3D RAW, which means now not only is it functional inside of... Da Vinci, but it's also better in Premiere because Nikon's RAW right now isn't the best in Premiere, and Nikon's RAW is not supported at all mm -hmm. in Final Cut. So now you've got a RAW that works in the three main NLEs, mm -hmm. and it's on a camera that's twenty five hundred dollars, twenty four hundred dollars. The Z six three, bro, that is how you win, and I think that is how you move Nikon over canon this year canon releases all these cameras and that's great one software update in my opinion bumps them up just saying let's see what the chat is <laughs> <laughs> i think they can do it bro uh, i think they can do it i well, think that they can think, release I think r3d that move would do it i don't know if they can actually release ours i don't know if r3d actually could even be supported on those cameras yeah they could overheat i don't know what the processor looks like all right, let's go into it. Let's see. Where they am I gonna, at? They're going to brick Canon their cameras still. like Sony brick. No. <laughs> All right, here's one. Nikon released the Komodo Y. I feel like... Do you like, mean the Komodo Z, Mark? Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like that, that's a misnamed option. Like, if it was... If you're going to release... If you're used to, like, a Komodo X... Or is he saying a cheaper Nikon? Dude, Mark, we need to know. No, no, no. I, I think it's a Komodo... It would have to be, like, it'd be a dumb thing not to name it Komodo Z. Yeah, because they have the Z mount. Yeah, yeah. It, it just makes sense. But I, I I don't know if that would win it. Now, release a Komodo Z with all the specs of a Komodo X, but for $5,000, then yeah. You could, oh, do you think that it. they could, do you think that they could do a Komodo and a Komodo Z, but both in Z mount? Mm, I mean. Would that be? I don't, I don't see Would that one. be something? I don't know. I guess it depends on how much tooling they're going to do. Komodo Y for yellow. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right. Here's one from uh, Kofi. He says, a cinema lens kit that can work with reds, that can work with the reds. Go up one. <laughs> what? Damn. Yeah, Remember oh, when I was like, you shoot Lumix. My bad. <laughs> My bad. That was wild. You wild for that. Yusuf. <laughs> Nikon needs better color. Look, I'll be honest with you, bro. I think Nikon has the most slept on colors. I would. Yeah, I would agree. I, I like Nikon colors better than Sony colors. And no hate to Sony. I'm just saying I do like Nikon better yeah, than. preference wise. I like Canon better than I like Nikon. But I think Nikon's I colors are, are great. I think Canon, how do I put this? I like Nikon's colors better, especially recently with the red LUTs. That, mm. that sealed it for me when it comes to colors. That said, Canon has always shifted very magenta, mm -hmm. which is great for certain skin tones. Yes, 100%. Our skin tones. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, just learn how to autofocus on us better. I appreciate yes. that. All right. Did you say yes? I appreciate the cosine. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nikon C80 dock style uh, competitor. 
Uh, 2026 release. Catch up to canon. Look, I don't know. This is, I think this is one of the areas where I'm like very interested to see like what Nikon could do, especially with the acquisition of Red. Because Red has always been very much a cinema camera. Yeah. Like film set camera, right? And then Nikon has always been very much a photography camera, but it also now is like more of a hybrid video camera. But they still don't touch, like neither one of those brands touch the dock area. Yeah. Canon has the photography. They have the dock camera, but that dock camera also can kind of be a cinema camera. And the same thing with Sony. Sony has kind of all three. Sony has the photography mirrorless camera. They have the dock camera with the Z, the uh, FX6, FX9, and then they have their cinema cameras with the Burano and the Venice and the Venice systems. I wonder if it's even an interest for Nikon to come out with a dock style camera. And, like, does Red make a dock style camera or does Nikon work with Red make a dock style camera that meets in the middle? I don't know. That's something that's very interesting to me. Right now, it, it feels a little bit like a waste of money. Nikon, by Radio Shack. <laughs> y'all just be wilding. <laughs> y'all just be saying stuff. Y'all just be talking. Y'all don't even want us to. Y'all just like, what? How, well, how dumb of a comment can I put and will they bring it up on stream? Uh, Nikon, offer a version of Red Raw. Via a firmware update on the Z8 and the Z9. I'm going to say, look, I think if they put on the Z8 and the Z9, that would make sense. Yes. They put it on the Z6 III, though. That's the killer. Yeah, the Z9. Go up one to Thomas. Uh, the Ain't nobody got the Z9. A lot of people got the Z8. Yeah. But a lot more people will have the Z6. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about, Thomas. And not enough people have seen Nikon stuff. Even if they have been seeing it from creators like you, you know, like sort of deal, they don't know it's Nikon. Uh, he says, open source R3D Raw. Now, this would be a huge move. Mm. If they allowed R3D Raw on their competitors' cameras. But I don't think people will appreciate Nikon for it. Like... What I mean by that is, I don't know if, like, how does Nikon win? I mean, financially, they'll financially win. Financially win. If they can let everybody else buy it, rights to use it. But I don't think that they would, and, like, they'd have to charge so much that I would just imagine it's not even worth it. He meant to say open gate. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. Rumen. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Again, y'all, add anamorphic support. Dude, you... Cam Mackey sold 10,000 units of place. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like how you are with Canon. That's how Cam Mackey is with Blazar. And like you guys have your little open like there are open gate fan people. <laughs> and y'all allowed. That needs to be on a t-shirt. Open gate fan people. <laughs> Bro, that's it. We need to have like Canon fan people, open gate fan people. We don't need a Sony fan people. <laughs> there ain't none. <laughs> uh, we'll create a Lewis fan people. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> It's just Lewis. It's, it's Lewis and Lewis. JB. All right, here we go. Uh, Ron says, Nikon, give me a camera. I'll chill for it. <laughs> Bro, we creating chills Dude, on this channel. The way that people be hating on people that chill, yeah, man, get they, out of here. They ain't even paying. Y'all ain't never got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got the offer. Seriously. Uh, here we go. Here's one for the youths. <laughs> Reach the youths. 90% of Nikon shooters are 55 plus. Hey, Brandon, how old are you? <laughs> I'm in the 10%. <laughs> he's in the 10%. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, Nike, I'm getting uh, close. He, he, he is getting close to 55 plus. I'm he not is, getting close. He's getting close. I'm not getting That's close. That's not what you're saying? I'm not getting close. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a joke. That's you. Oh, my Youth. gosh. My jaws are hurting. I think I've been smiling too much. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for checking out this clip. But you know what's better than watching these clips? Enjoying the show live, which we do every single Friday at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. The best part is if you disagree with what we have to say, you can tell us that live in the chat. So we'd love to see you there this Friday.